Good morning. Good morning from Munich. This is Uwe Michel speaking. I'm absolutely delighted to be here together in this international round and uh, joining the Horizons discussion for this year. Kindly uh, let me introduce uh, the colleagues here on our panel. This is first and foremost Sister Bridge. She is the principal and co-founder of Red in the Air. She has been working on marketing strategies, sustainable business since many, many years. Hello, Tissa. I suppose you are Hello, in everyone. Tokyo. Yeah, in that's Tokyo, great. yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, let's stay in, let's stay the farthest away place from Europe, Munich. This is Tokyo. And I would like to greet uh, Kuniko Shimada from Tokyo. He is the CEO of KS International Strategies, and he's an expert in providing strategic advice to firms on sustainable business models and M&A negotiations. Ohaya gozaimasu and welcome Shibada-san. Thank you very much. Ohaya gozaimasu. Thank you. Uh, let's jump over to Australia. We have Bruce Muhead, the CEO of Mindhive from Australia with us. Uh, Bruce has profound experiences in education, innovation, and strategy consulting. Great to meet you online at least today hope yeah. to see you soon in person and i suppose you are which part of australia are you currently we're in brisbane which is on the east coast just an hour or so flight north of sydney so mm. what a wonderful what a wonderful city with great beaches it's a beautiful city oh, yes. very close to the beaches yeah fantastic fantastic we stay in Asia and uh, walk over to Seoul. This is Wukli yes. with us. Hello, good morning. good morning. An impressive young entrepreneur from Korea, dedicated in building up a global network that enables public private partnerships between governments, corporations, and institutions. Welcome, and I'm absolutely keen to hear your views and, uh, and, and your thinking. Thanks for being with us, Wu. Thank you. And Finally, and last but not least, I'm very, very happy to greet Bonnie Liao from Hong Kong. She is the Executive Director of Social Enterprises Research Academy. Bonnie is an active public speaker with a focus in innovation and sustainability. Bonnie, hello, and hello. <laughs> good afternoon to Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah good, good to afternoon. have you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the... It's a very interesting topic we we got from uh, uh, Horizon to discuss it here. This is modern world and human society is facing unprecedented challenges. We have geopolitical tensions. We're sitting here in Europe just a couple of hours away by car from a war, from the Russian-Ukraine war. We have uh, tensions between the U.S. and China, we have collapsing supply chain due to COVID. We have a constantly mounting climate change problem as well as increasing famine in the world that will all be catalyzed by the war in Ukraine. To solve that problem for the world, an all hands on deck approach is required. We have learned no country, no region can solve these issues by itself. Cooperation, communication, working together is, and this is not doubted by anybody as I know, uh, the key. But if I open the newspaper this morning, all what I see is everything else but cooperation. It's mm. conflict, it's fighting, it's uh, getting getting the claims secured from each other. I, I ask myself, and uh, we also ask here at the Horizon team to discuss, is there any role for us? Can we do something to get back to a, a cooperative approach? Can we bring back a positive, and I underline, a positive globalization and communication to tackle the problems we are facing? And with that, I'm very happy to open the discussion. And I think if I may ask Tissa, will you give us your thoughts 
on, on the topic coming up. Please go ahead. Sure, absolutely. Um, I think that what you raise is a very, very important question. One of the things that we've seen in recent years is we talk, there's a lot of people on this panel today who are working on sustainability in some fashion. And what we've seen is that the definition of sustainability has very much broadened. Um, and the DGs were kind of a key impetus of this, but you know, this idea that um, there's many things we need to tackle in order to have a livable planet, in order to have a productive world, right, where everybody's thriving. Um, and the last goal is actually SDG 17, and that is cooperation for the goals, okay? And there's many people who say, and I tend to agree, that that's the most important one. Because to be honest, we can't really do any of these other things without cooperation. I think one of the things that we've seen throughout history is that when we cooperate as societies, as human beings, we tend to be better. We tend to do better. Um, it's important, if it's, of course, you know, corporations have... have have competitive you know, elements and aspects. Um, we have many parts of our life where we have competitions, but we just tend to thrive more, I think, when we collaborate. I think what we're going to see, and I, I guess the question is how far can we go on the brink of things before we pull it back and we realize, well, actually, we need to come back together again to sort many of these issues. I think that will happen. Um, I hope that it will not take another 20 years for that to happen, to swing in the other direction. But I think we're going to see it swing back um, eventually. I, I would also say that um, we have a lot of really good examples now, particularly in the corporate world of uh, collaboration. We used to think about collaboration more in the um, governmental con con context, right? In terms of governmental organizations. I think we're now seeing a lot of that in the, the business uh, realm. So we're seeing business work better, for example, with NGOs. NGOs and businesses used to have very adversarial relationships um, now they're actually starting to do more things collectively. So I think NGOs realize that in order to kind of achieve many of their objectives, they need corporations, businesses of all sizes who are so important to our economy and our world to come along to. So I think we have good examples and things to draw on. They're just not the things that you're going to hear about every day in the press and the news. But we do have things that we can replicate, I think, in other places. Mm. That's great. Thank you very much. So we will definitely come up when discussing where are potential cooperation for NGOs and where can even 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 the business work together with NGOs. I think is an extremely interesting thinking. Mm -hmm. Bruce, um, do you want to give us some some of your thoughts? Yeah, I might business? just. Hmm? I'll just. Is it possible just to quickly share screen? Yes, please. Okay. It's possible. I live in a world. Um, can you? Can you Screen. Who's, who's sharing um, the screen? Do or we? I'm sharing the screen, but it doesn't look like it, it has access. So um, um, that's why uh, we always have a bit issues with the, with the, with the technique. But yeah, Frank, never, Tom, never goes the way. Obviously, he will have a new technique coming into the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's exactly right. So one of the um, one of the areas, or the key area that I work in within my work probably over the, my, most of my life but more particularly the last five six years has been around collective intelligence and um and i found myself in this space because we're all becoming more connected so uh, and i've been involved with a with a group Parasis now for uh, eight or nine years and I've, i love the physical meeting gatherings wow um, and I, and I miss those in Lisbon. I'm not sure where this one is, but let's pretend it's Lisbon because that was my favourite time to gather, to gather with a thousand other thinkers and doers. And I think if we look at the nature of the world right now, we are just becoming so connected that we have a re, an opportunity to redefine expertise and a re, an opportunity to, to harness sort of the fragmented expertise. So... Uh, Six years ago, I was in an aeroplane going to Lisbon. Now I'm in my um, my youngest daughter's old bedroom that I've reshaped as an office. And I spend most of my working career in this house, you know, in terms of the last couple of years. Um, we're only just going back into our offices again. But I think we're noticing that expertise is spreading anywhere and everywhere. I've just advertised a job this morning and I'm looking at um, someone who's coming from Africa to be part of our development team that they don't have to be in our office and so forth. So it's quite natural now that the smarts that are capable of solving sustainability issues, um, wars and so forth, are spread. 
And so I've become very interested in the power of technology for good that enables the connectivity to do things like co-create solutions. And so I've spent the last three or four years building tech, but also building a community of interested people who are problem solvers. And the key learnings that I'm having is that the crowd, if we call it the crowd, is this untapped latent um, uh, uh, expertise that sits available to all of us. And there's great examples, for example, of problems being solved in South Africa in the last five or so years Um, townships didn't have electricity and the government hosted a challenge with a prize and an environmental innovator partnered with South Africa's largest glass glass company and produced a solar solar jam jar that basically gave eight hours of light through the night. And that innovation is solving a really critical issue in a country But it came about because the government was honest in saying, we don't know how to solve this problem with the budgets we've got. We have to think differently. And you see many examples of that across the world with XPRIZE um, cleaning up the oil spill. Um, And in that case, a tattoo artist was in the semi-finalist team. Now, no one would predict a tattoo artist would be able to participate in an oil cleanup that was twice as fast as the government's. So all of a sudden we're in this really exciting period of when we're thinking about climate change, when we're thinking about the Ukraine war and the ways we engage with um, countries, it's not just the usual suspects anymore. We can connect into the tattoo artists. We can connect into, if you find out the most, the, the largest number of problem solvers on the Kaggle problem solving platform are taxi drivers after work in Abu Dhabi. And so there's these people who outside of their day job are actually interested in participating in, 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 in um, sharing their insights. The future of consulting firms are expert networks, not building more and more same, same. So I think there's a really nice discussion today we could have about how we can potentially think about harnessing expertise for good, for the sustainability development goals, for and how harass us with its ecosystem of problem solvers, actionable, action-orientated problem solvers, how we can really bring the uh, collaborative intelligence that we have as a globe of, is it 7 billion, 8 billion people, where more than half of us are connected and the problems will be often solved by the unusual suspects, not the environmentalists solving the climate change problems, the health workers solving the health problems. So I just I'll be bringing my what I'll be bringing to discussions is really is maybe there's a there's this new opportunity for for different thinking, non-linear, non-analog, but much more of a a, a lateral thinking approach to problem solving. Great, thank you very much, very much, Bruce. And yeah, this is this is not digital what we are doing, but nobody thought three years ago that we would sit together here, six people no. from three continents, just discussion issues. So that uh, a completely eye opener for me that is working, and it is super interesting. And thank you, thank you for this, thank you for the ideas, and I'm really looking forward to the discussion. I I, I may go back to Tokyo and uh, ask Kuni to give us his initial thinking. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Uwe, and uh, greetings from the actually the subway station in Tokyo because I had to jump into one of the conference booths uh, located in the subway station. So uh, if you hear some weird sound, it's not me, but actually uh, it's because of the Tokyo subway. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, like, and I've been uh, working on the many different uh, issues and also the arena, but the everything I have been done for the last 20 years uh, requires a global collaboration, ranging from the climate change issues peace and security, which I've been working as a peace negotiator and also conflict resolution, I mean, the mediator for the peace on behalf of the United Nations. And also currently I'm just doing it individually, but the, everything needs a global collaboration. But however, I have to say, I strongly hope that, you know, the next global trend, mega trend would be the collaboration. But my answer is unfortunately no. Because, you know, the, the world we live in shifts towards the global divide and dichotomy, especially the issues of the COVID-19, especially the uh, kind of access to the vaccines or like a medical services. 
that there's a huge dichotomy and the gaps between the, those who are in the developed world versus like, those who are living in the developing countries. So like a number of the vaccines and shots are completely different uh, from the people to people. And also the climate change issues of okay, those uh, who've been uh, recognized as developed countries have uh, emitted so long. And also like, you know, the, after the covering some responsibilities, now like uh, those countries are now access to the finance and technologies, while the other side are not. And also US-China library, and that also like a uh, help us, maybe I shouldn't say help, but actually like, you know, uh, made us uh, the encounter, the world is completely divided into two or three. And currently with the Ukraine war, which I have some relationship or like a work to do. It's like a currently we see the Ukraine plus NATO side versus the Russian side, maybe Russia plus China side. So there's also great dichotomy, a great divide we're experiencing. But the currently, like, you know, I would say the businesses and governments and also the civil societies mutually influence among each other and rely on each other in creating trends. So the whatever choices, whatever decisions we have made, definitely do have the uh, direct influence on the, what we are living tomorrow. So for example, sit in the policy directions, uh, they put some business trends and so on. So like, especially on the global trends and carbon neutrality by the mid century things, that was a huge success among like in you know, a multi-sector collaboration globally. But of course, how to reach that goal is completely up to the uh, individual government and also companies as well. So now we need to uh, refocus on the importance of the knowing and understanding your counterparts well, instead of focusing on pushing one's own views and ideas in order to regain collaborative mood in the global community. Especially now, like, you know, the, we're facing the situation and the, what is the right or what is wrong. And uh, this is uh, another kind of a dichotomy. And uh, maybe like, you know, it's necessary for everybody in the different sectors to first maybe like uh, put your own idea and uh, thoughts and positions aside first, and then uh, try to understand your counterparts thoroughly. And also like, you know, to show genuine interest in their views, needs and concerns, etc. by through like a good questions, try to know what you are thinking, what you're interested in, what the problems are, da 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 da. da. So uh, that will help or like, uh, help us find or identify the commonalities among us, and also the critical differences and gaps at the same time. And also, we can even like explore the hidden needs information that leads us to creative solution. So that's also like in you know, a key for if we, I mean, I still I'm still hopeful that the, we can still rebuild the society with the mutual trust and the collaboration. So uh, that's also like what I would like to put on the table and also looking forward to the discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the positive tone. I think this is important. We all are globalized people. We all live in many different countries, not our home countries. And with all this positive thinking, I, I, I suppose it will be extremely complicated and I live in, in Tokyo for a couple of years but I never realized that in the I never realized that in the subway station there are meeting rooms like this it looks fantastically professional <laughs> I'm deeply 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 impressed so if there is a society which is even more modern than the Japanese society is the Korean society and that brings me to my colleague and friend Mug Lee the floor is yours the floor is yours for your ideas and your proposals. Kindly go ahead. Thank you. Okay. So hello, everyone. It is a great pleasure to participate in Horace Global Meeting this year again with prestigious speakers of the world. My name is Wook Lee. I'm the chairman and founder of W Foundation. W Foundation is a nonprofit organization. And W Foundation has been working more than 10 years for climate change and supporting climate refugees of the world. W Foundation is an official partner of the UNFCCC. So today I will be sharing about collaboration for climate change. So W Foundation and UNFCC together, we were thinking what can be the better way to strengthen the global alliance to reach our goal, net, net zero. So we needed actual form, actual alliance among the world to overcome the current 
climate crisis. Climate change is one of the biggest challenge ever faced by human, political, and economic systems. Its impacts are visible now, with the rising sea level, extreme weather events, and biodiversity. Survival is at the stake of the mankind. Uh, so we need intimate cooperation and strong alliance of global businesses, organizations, governments, and civil society leaders are essential to reach net zero, our planet's goal. So innovation is needed and innovation has been used by humans through ages to cope with the changes and discover new opportunities. So under the current paradigm, innovation is primarily used as a tool to foster the competitive, sustained growth. But there are challenges in innovations. So because ambitions are low because they're based on what is currently perceived as possible, not what is needed. So there, and there is a still important gap between ambition required for meeting the Paris Agreement climate goals and the current level of climate actions. So in, in the climate action, we need moonshot thinking to bring about the necessary move from incremental to transformational climate action. W Foundation made an actual form of alliance called the Global Climate Action Fund with the cooperation of the UNFCCC to discover and support the potential and innovative climate action technologies and ideas globally. Technology innovation, we think, alone cannot address the climate change challenge. We need cluster of solutions, including technology, but also policy, financial, business model, and leadership solutions are required. So our w, uh, Global Climate Action Fund aims to discover transformative innovations for a low emission and climate resilient future. It will provide a global community of practice through the annual conference to share ideas and design climate solutions in the spirit of collaboration. Thank you very much. That's my speech. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. and. Uh... Um, you definitely will have more information for, for the colleagues on the international conference ongoing in Seoul this year. I think this is a fantastic initiative you're writing. Mm. Uh, last but not least, yeah, so uh, the floor is yours, and we are extremely keen to hear your thinking on our collaboration topic. One big story. Thank you. Sure. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me again, Horasis. And it has always been my pleasure speaking to you all. I'm Bonnie, and I'm the executive director and founder of Shosha Enterprise Research Academy. Our mission has always been to harness the market to bring social caring. And we always hope to, through collaboration, to create a cross-sectoral platform for business, academia, social and political sectors, so as to foster our communications and to promote social sustainability on our platform, as well as in the Asian communities. And our main theme is to promote a social caring framework with six principles, such as environmental protection, anti-discrimination, no forced labor, community involvement and anti-corruption, as well as to promote safety and quality service and products to the community. So through this social caring framework, we have always been um, hosting talks as well, so as to look into certain solutions to certain social problems. And uh, we hope that through this um, this result uh, through this um, methodology so as to result in the creation of shared value among stakeholders and to deliver a consistent impact to our environmental and social environments. And I think that um, today's topic is also we're talking about collaboration and it also inspired me to have a deep thought about how actually we can achieve this uh, in a long term way. And uh, we've always been talking about creating shared value in different um, 
uh, talks and um, we see that in today's world when we try to push certain um, policies on how to we can get different stakeholders on the same page it has actually been very important and also also been a very cha- big challenge to everyone and uh, especially when we see that we're having more ESG focus um, funds or add more ESG focus um, uh, policy in uh, listing rules, etc. And we always see that how these years we have been shifting more focus on that is because uh, we have the policy makers to set the trend out first so as to create an ecosystem so, uh, for everyone. We see that uh, the influence goes from the funds of funds to uh, fund investors, to listed companies, to issue reports so that we can disclose more of the ESG impact and the changing consumer behavior as well as the result. So how can we actually achieve that? Because uh, we have to link every stakeholder's core interest into the same page and to adding in this shared value game rule so that we can look beyond our own borders and to have a positive change on the, especially the picture of our future. So this actually also inspired me on uh, the way of about collaboration is uh, to find this uh, shared value game rule. And we see that uh, the existing issue in today's world is because we cannot um, find a way to uh, get out of the original dependency on some old practice and also some existing contracts mm-hmm. who have signed. We see that in the Paris Agreement that we have different governments and signatories also have been showing efforts to collaborate and also to reduce certain low, to, to lower the carbon emissions. But why is it so difficult to break through and why is it so difficult to bring in new renewable energy to to our next generation and also across different economies is because there are certain strongholds in our old economy we can say that in different regions and we also see that you know it takes a lot of time and money of investment so i think the most important thing is government initiative has to come into a really important role for starting things off and um, ex- but especially uh, we also see that uh, as the economy downturn um, in different regions, it also hindered the, the changing movements. And one of the thing is, um, I think uh, I would like to also look into uh, maybe COVID-19 as we have experienced this COVID-19, we, we see that innovation actually comes into the way um, in breaking the wall. Um, of different parties. So um, we have to really make use of this challenge and turn this into opportunity so as to maybe break different walls of the old economy and the old way of practice and how we operate things, how we can, how, how we can actually bring in innovation uh, in the future. Thank you. Mike is mute. Great thoughts, not enough time. Thank you very much for the technical hint from Korea. This is what we need in Europe, huh? as always. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Great thoughts, not enough, not enough time. Thank you very much for that. But I think we can even follow up in, 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 in the open discussion. Let me start, let me please start with Bruce. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, and, and fast you can say that because maybe that's one thing we should take out of us, why is the crowd so wise? How can we use the wisdom of the crowd? And uh, can you also protect this wisdom? Or, or, or do, do, have, you, have you been to be afraid that, that somebody is taking that, that, that wisdom for courses which we do not think they are right? Bruce, please. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to I'll qualify the crowd's now, I'm going to let, let you know my personal opinion, but did the crowd get it right with Brexit? Um, or did the crowd get it right with some of the presidential elections? And sometimes crowds can be dumb. And I'm not saying that about those situations, but sometimes crowds, because I remember I was in Ireland after Brexit, and maybe Brexit was just in one near one of the harassus meetings, because I do remember going to Ireland after it. And I remember that at that point, the crowd woke up the next morning and a large percentage of people said, 
now that I've thought about it, discussed this challenge or this topic, um, I would change my mind. So the crowd can be fickle. Um, I think mm. everyone knew the Google search of the night of the Brexit decision as a country. Some mm. people were typing in, "What is Brexit?" You know, and so, so we're not we're not all we're not that smart. The majority of us, in terms of, we are sometimes fickle with our decisions. And so, um, so I think the beauty of the crowd, the power of the crowd, and I see the crowd as like an innovation partner. Um, and companies like Lego have been using the crowd to develop products for kids for years. You know. Um, so is many commercial companies, Nike or whatever on that side. But I think the governments recently are realising that they need to involve citizens more. And you start to see that in a whole different ways, That, and particularly in Europe, Northern Europe. I know here in Australia, participatory democracy and things where it's not so much the physical town hall meeting anymore. It's the ability to talk to your um, to your citizens. We've just been approached by a political leader. We elect our Prime Minister on Saturday in Australia. And one of our political leaders of a electorate is 400 votes behind. So they call it a marginal seat. And they were wanting to use a tool like MindType to quickly get access to all of the citizens in their electorate to ask them, what is it that you are really looking for in this next term, this next year, three year term? What do you want from your leaders and, and so forth? And so you're starting to see that crowds can actually be not just focus groups, they can be co-creators. And the smart crowds are the ones that co-create solutions. And if we can engage in our crowds, whether they be our staff or whether they be our citizens uh, or whether they be the future of solving climate change, um, then I would ask that we frame it that we are orchestrating crowds to be co-creators of a solution. So men, throw more minds at a problem, not more money is what I say. So the more minds we can throw at a problem, that'll be it. So having said that, I think the um, that's probably the primary one there. The future is tokenizing insights. So to protect people, we think that um, crowdsourcing, the, the mega trend will go to the blockchain and people will start being wanting to know where's my idea going. So I'll leave it at that. There's lots to talk about in that one, but yeah, that's my end. I can imagine. Thank you very much. Twister, the crowd, NGO, you've mentioned NGO cooperating together. Are you using the crowd? Are you optimistic that NGOs will, will work closer together in the future? We're coming back to cooperation. Yeah, sure. So um, I, in terms of you know, NGOs aren't really my area of specialty, but more on the corporate side. And I think that corporations, the reason I think I agree with this idea of the crowd and having more participation from people outside of your entity or outside of your organization, because, you know, everybody's limited in what they know and corporations were kind of often are often designed for a purpose, right? The purpose may be to sell cars or the purpose may be to sell restaurants. And once you're asking people to do things like, um, Think about what your positive impact is on a particular community in a country or help mm -hmm. to work on decarbonization. Or These are not their areas of expertise at all. Uh, most corporations, right? Um, mm -hmm. So what that mm -hmm. requires is it requires is other partners who really understand those um, challenges better. And a lot of that knowledge, especially if you're thinking about impact on people, for example, sits mm -hmm. with uh, non-governmental organizations because they've been spending years, decades, thinking about people. Another thing as well is that, you know, if you look at the marketing department for any kind of large corporation, you know, they're focused on a purpose of selling things to you. They're not necessarily focused on the purpose of responding to you as a whole human being. Mm -hmm. So somebody mm -hmm. has to come along and fill in those gaps. So that's why I think organizations like NGOs, civil societies, even in some countries, um, religious organizations, depending on the countries and whether that's appropriate, um, think tanks, um, research institutes, universities, you know, the knowledge is distributed. And for organizations, especially organizations that are profit generating organizations to be better, to be the types of companies and organizations we want, um, they're going to have to collaborate to get that, um, to get better at those things. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me, let me, let me take that. Uh, corporations working out together, universities and so on. Kuni, you gave us, you gave us, and I'm very happy for that, of, a positive and optimistic outlook yeah you really think uh, uh, you, you mentioned collaboration will come back uh, positive uh, call it positive and i mean positive globalization will come back is that what you've heard from from uh, from, from you've heard from from from, from bruce 
supporting your thinking? Is this giving you hope? Yeah. Yeah, I would say I'm still hopeful, but actually there's only under the condition that the uh, everybody can wait to listen to the others. I mean, the besides, I mean, the, rather than just a push in uh, one's own idea, because uh, for example, within the corporate, I mean, the each department does have the different ideas, even like they're looking at the same things. Government sectors are the same things because you know I just visited before this meeting. I visited several different the government uh, departments so within the Japanese government. And the facing, for example, let's say the decarbonization, it's a, there's a keyword, but everybody has a different access, a different thoughts, and even different interests and uh, obstacles. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, actually, if we can, uh, you know, uh, introduce the kind of attitude, okay, I have my opinion and position, but the first, let me just hear you. And the, well, I would like to know what you're thinking about, about mm -hmm. this. And then try to understand the, what they're saying and what they're considering and saying saying and then the try to uh, kind of uh, reframe it using my own word and the once they seems to be comfortable with it then I like, then they maybe I may ask like so uh, can I do the same so like um, I mean it's my term to like you know to share my ideas and also this is what I see and what do you think and could you just elaborate what I just said? And then that will help us to understand. And also the ones we have the basis or foundation of a mutual understanding, then that we can you know, plant the seed for the collaboration again, even though current world is completely divided. Mm -hmm. So the, when, when it happens, I don't know. I mean, the, but the first, like, I, I mean, the, we may need to see the kind of, what kind of results we, could, we, we see uh, from the war in the Ukraine. And uh, hopefully like, there will be no other wars in the 21st century, I do hope. But uh, that's also the one thing uh, we will see uh, as a kind of uh, the point to the foundation for the collaboration. So, still hopeful. And uh, if we can see the common like a direction, like what we are aiming at uh, from this world, then I think that's a starting point for rebuilding mm -hmm. the collaboration among mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Before giving the last, the last one, the last sentences, we are running out of time to MOOC because I really want to, the MOOC is telling us more about his conference. It's definitely worthwhile. Oni, um, you fund the fund, uh, the financial side. I'm, I'm from Allianz, as you know, an insurance company. We are doing a lot in, 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 in green alliances. We are doing a lot for bringing investors in the ESG side. Is this something where, where you think it's the right way? How flexible are you in doing that? And how much capacity do you need to understand whether an investment really is following an ESG guidelines or not? We are struggling with that. All right. So, so we were, if you are talking about how can we actually measure the impacts of the ESG reporting and also whether investors are actually following the guideline, um, there comes to one of the key questions, like, because everyone are trying to, uh, I mean, different countries are also trying to look into the research on how can we set up a ESG standard. At the moment, uh, there's not yet a cons consensus or like international consensus like ISO, like this kind of like uh, body, international body to, to regulate the ESG development on the spectrum. And I think it's very, uh, importance to have an international standard of ESG uh, to to come to come up in the next five years, and this required a lot of collaboration. Again, as we said, and why we, why is it requiring a lot of collaboration? Because as we see that in the in the body of ISO, it also have to have different international representative to actually sit on the board. And so as to to come up with different and to make to different index or different um, measures to see whether uh, it is effective. And it also it would be a very complicated uh, process as well to look into uh, different uh, international standards because ESG actually involve um, various uh, sector, not just environmental, not just on quality, not just on safety, not just on like, it's like a very holistic thing. So when we look into ESG standard, so as to come up with a um, menu and so as to come up with um, a guideline for different 
not just investors, but also on the corporate side and different parties to come together uh, so as to achieve certain standard. We, we're, I think that at the moment, they, we're, we're still figuring out what's going on um, mm. the, from different sectors. So, yeah, it requires a lot of collaboration. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Book, three minutes to market a super conference in Seoul. Yeah, <laughs> off we go. Done. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Okay, so to, to lastly add on, uh, in climate action field, the collaboration is really needed because like we see that there are a lot of innovation ideas spread in the world. Maybe there are super innovative ideas in this country, but uh, like this country, but um, however, when those kind of innovative ideas combine together and strengthen as one, it can be really powerful because um, some kind of innovative ideas stops stops as an stops from obstacles of financial or political. Maybe those kind of ideas can can apply to other countries. So, yeah. So we we are looking forward for a collaboration between countries and also um, super one of the super leaders companies like uh, Alliance have have to actively more um, we seek more cooperation in this climate action field. To be supported. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. I yeah. promise to Frank, as always, uh, Horace's meetings uh, need are uh, super interesting, but they also have to stop in time. I thank you. I uh, thank you deepest. You are helping me fantastically in that. Great <laughs> thoughts. Great thoughts on collaboration, NGO cooperation, ESG, wise crowds. The wise crowd is important, much more important than wise people. You are super wise. Thank you very much for being with us. I really enjoyed it. And I hope to see you. I hope to see you in Lisbon next year. That would be great. Thank you very much for that. And have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.